Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Salar Khan here and today we do what? We do a number of uh, more examples, three more examples that remain in the book related to what? Related to the economic analysis of, of the power factor improvement. Okay, so we are done till 6.9. Today we have got what? We've got 6.10. So the basic thing in all these examples is to find the KVAs, to find the KVARs and to find the net power demand so power is this one this one is your q in kvars this one is your s in kvas and this one is the power in kilowatts so we use the definition of sine of phi we use the definition of cos of phi and we use the definition of tangent of phi where phi is this angle so perpendicular by hypotenuse base by hypotenuse perpendicular by base so these are the definitions according to which we go on so let's say example number 6.10 is the first example for the day a factory load consists of an induction motor now A, you have an induction motor of 50 horsepower and they have converted it to watts as well for you, 37.3 kilowatts. This is an induction motor with 0.8 power factor, 0.8 power factor and an efficiency of 85%. Now of course this is an induction motor, so this will have a lagging power factor. B, what is load number B is a synchronous motor of what? Of 25 horsepower and again it is given in watts as well 18.65 kilowatts and then what do you have with point, point 0.9 power factor 0.9 power factor and the efficiency is given is 0.9 so synchronous motor although it's given over here synchronous motor has a leading power factor number c is a lightning load of what a lightning load of 10 kilowatts and of course the power factor is a unity for the lightning load find the annual electrical charges annual bill so the annual bill is unknown what do you have? The tariff is given 60 per kVA. The tariff is what? Rupees 60 per kVA of maximum demand per annum plus rupees 5 paisa plus 5 paisa. So 0 0.05 rupees per kilowatt hours. Assuming uh, the load to be steady for 2000 hours in a year. So assuming the load to be for 2000 hours in a year. So you have to find what you have to find the annual bill so how do you find it this is on the basis of kvas and kilowatt hours so find out the kvas find out the kilowatt hours first let's say find out the kilowatt hours so e is basically the load factor multiplied by the maximum demand multiply time load factor is not given maximum demand is not mentioned take the connected load pm as it take the connected load p as the the load and t is the time in hours which is given 2000 now for the connected load what do you have is you need to find t uh, you need to have complete p so what would that be that would be the the p for for each and individual one so first of all the the this that horsepower is given this is the output they have converted this this is still the output but we need the input power so the input power for the induction motor i will write a would be the output power that is 37.3 divided by the efficiency that is 0.85 so this would give you the power for what for the induction motor this is 43.88 this would be 43.88 right yes similarly for the synchronous motor i would write the power input for the synchronous motor or i will write over here is b so this would be the output power that is 18.65 in kilowatt divided by the efficiency is 0 0.9 so 
uh, where is it this 18.6 for budget point is 20.72 so you have 20.72 which means the total power p is what the total power p would be this 43.88 plus 20.72 and plus the lightning load which is 10 so what does this come out to be total uh, active power is 74.6 kilowatts 74.6 kilowatts so have a look put it over here 74.6 multiplied with the number of hours are 2000 this would give you the number of energy units uh, so this is what 149200 149200 kilowatt hours okay now we don't have an R over here sometimes I write an R that is not correct you have a kwh fine so you've got your e now what do you have the variable cost or the energy charges i would write over here is the energy charges would be what that is based on that 149200 multiplied by 5 pesos so multiply 0 0.05 rupees so this would be 7460 this is rupees 7460 this is for the energy charges now you need what you need the total kvas total kvas right you've got your p total now you also need your total kvas to find the the fixed cost that is per kilo per kv of the maximum demand so for that you need to convert the kilowatts into what into kvas so kilowatt and kva which means uh, p and s so p and s has, uh, has an interlink between the the cause function or you can just do what you can take the q first total kva would be given by you cannot add them directly although you can find individual s1 s2 and s3 from this formula but you cannot add them directly because they are not in phase one is leading the other is lagging the other is at unity perfect so you, they are not in phase so you cannot go for directly s1 plus s2 plus s3 so you have to go for the what for the for the that uh, pythagoras theorem so you have to have the p total squared plus the q total squared have a look so this would be the formula so out of which the p total we have got already is 74.6 squared and for q total you need what for q total you need q1 plus q2 plus q3 so have a look q1 q and p so we need the relation between q and p so that is from tangent of phi right yes so you can find out the individual phi's from here from here you would have phi let's say i name it a would be the cos inverse of 0 0.8 whatever it may be phi b would be the cos inverse of 0 0.9 i'll see if the book has written it so they've not written it anyways so now q1 would be for the induction motor q1 uh, q uh, q1 or uh, let's say a b c i would just name it because i have written them over there so q a would be what q is p times tangent of phi so this would be p p for this we have already calculated is 43 p a tangent of phi a right so this would be what p a is over here 43.88 into the tangent of what tangent of cos inverse of 0 0.8 so this comes out to be what uh, where is it where is it here 32.91 32.91 32 fine yes induction motor so this is with a plus sign plus j or lagging kvars these are kvars fine yes now qb would be what qb would be pb times tangent of phi b so have a look pb we have calculated over here is 20.72 times the tangent of what angle cos inverse of 0.9 so this would come out to be 10 this is 10 and have a look this is synchronous motor so this would be with a negative j why because these are leading kvrs or these are capacitive kvrs the previous one was inductive right similarly qc is a lightning load so that would be zero because it does not have any angle cause of phi is one so which means what phi is cause inverse of one would be zero i believe right yes uh, because this is operating at a unity power factor so have a look just put it over here sum it up uh, what is it 32.91 
minus 10. So this comes out to be what? 22.91. So have a look 22.91 squared under the root. So which means you've got your S total, which comes out to be what? 78, 78. So this is KVA. So the fixed charges or the KVA charges on basis of maximum demand would be 78 multiplied by how much multiplied by 60 and this comes out to be what uh, 4680 rupees 4680 rupees so these are the fixed charges now the cost of the electricity is what this is the fixed cost plus the variable cost so which means uh, this one 7460 plus 4680 this gives you the final answer and this is a, a little misprint over here but anyways i believe it's 12140 rupees check this out do the calculations yourself i've already i tell you always okay 6.11 the next example please what does it states i hope this is clear you have to find your p you have to find your q you have to find your s right now s1 we can find out directly with the help of q but we did not find it why because we cannot have directly s1 plus s2 plus s3 is equal to s total this is wrong so for that we need q and we go for this formula because they are not in phase fine this is the reason 6.11 a supply system feed the following loads number one is a lightning load of 500 kilowatts so number one is what lightning load of 500 kilowatts Number two is what? Number two is a load of 400 kilowatts at 400 kilowatts at power factor is what? 0 0.707 lagging. 0 0.707 lagging. Number third is what? Number third is 800 kilowatts at 0.8 leading. 800 kilowatts at a power factor of 0.8 leading. Number fourth is a load of 500 kilowatts at 0.6 lagging. 500 kilowatts at 0.6 lagging okay and number five oh we've got a lot of loads synchronous motor driving 540 kilowatts synchronous motor and it is driving so let me just take this call please so what was the saying so so the next is the fifth load the fifth load is a synchronous motor driving a 550 kilowatt dc generator uh, this is driving a 500 and 40 kilowatts DC generator and having an overall efficiency of 90%. Calculate the power factor of the synchronous motor so that the power factor of synchronous motor is unknown so that the station power factor, the overall station power factor becomes a unit. Right? Okay. So let's get going let's get going so calculate the kvars calculate the kvars right yes so the corresponding angles you can find out the corresponding angles you can find it from cause inverse right yes so you can find out the lagging kvars from which formula uh, q you can find out if uh, p is given so q is equal to p times tangent of phi right so first of all if i say about the lagging q if i if i say about the lagging q so what would that be that would be uh, this thing for for case number two right lagging q would be for case number two plus which other case for, for this case also for, for case number four right two and four yes yes so what would that be that would be 400 tangent of what angle cause inverse of 0 0.707 right this would be the q for this load the next would be for plus 500 and tangent of what angle cause inverse of 0.6 right yes so the lagging kvrs are what they are 1065 they are 1065 1065 kvars right uh, and lagging with a plus j similarly the leading kvrs or the leading q that would be for what case so you have got uh, this one case only for the load this is 0.8 leading this is 0.8 leading yes so that would be 800 times the tangent of what angle cause inverse of 0.8 this comes out to be what this comes out to be 600 
this comes out to be 600 now these are leading this one are lagging so which means if that is leading this is lagging you have to put it to uh, to to one right uh, you have to put it equal to 1 so what would be the case is you have to put the station power factor to 1 so what would be the leading Q for what the KVRs for the capacitor should be how much so that they balance out so that should be 1065 minus 600 so if you put that much of KVRs so the net KVRs lagging and leading would be balanced and the power factor would be 1 so these are 465 for capacitor KVRs which will be the leading KVRs that will be injected by the capacitor right yes now we need what we need the power factor of the synchronous motor so first of all the efficiency is given it is driving a 540 kilowatts of a load generator so the input would be what that would be the 540 divided by 0.9 would be the input power uh, to the uh, to the synchronous motor so what do you have is that would be 600 kilowatts 600 kilowatts now have a look what do you have uh, 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 you've got the, the basically the synchronous motor is providing as the capacitance right the capacitance is basically provided by the synchronous motor so which means these kvrs are for the, by the synchronous motor so you've got the kvr that is q you've got the p so you've got q you've got p so which means if you take the tangent of phi is what so that is q by p so q is 465 divided by what divided by 600 so from here you can find out the phi which would be the tangent inverse of this thing and that phi would be what that would be 37.7 degrees 37.7 degrees and and which means cause of 37.7 degrees would be the power factor of the synchronous motor which is about 0 0.79 leading 0 0.79 leading is that fine it is so this was about this example let's say we go for the last example of the day 6.10 uh, uh, is that clear it is why did I take this because I have to make the station perfect or equal to unity so which means I have to balance I have to equalize the leading and the lagging KVRs so I've got the leading KVRs I've got the lagging KVR so which means the net leading that I have to inject would be the difference of the two so that the two become equal I found out that then I have the the KVRs I have the power so I can find out the power factor angle from that and then the cause of that angle would give me the power factor required 6.12 an industrial load consists of a synchronous motor of 100 metric horsepower synchronous motor of 100 metric horsepower second load is what induction motor induction motor uh, where is it aggregating 200 metric horsepower 200 metric horsepower 0 0.707 power factor lagging 0 0.707 power factor lagging and 82 percent efficiency 82 percent efficiency and number third is a lightning load aggregating 30 kilowatts number third is what a lightning load that is of a 30 kilowatts the tariff is rupees 100 per annum per kVA maximum demand plus 6 pesa per kilowatt hour. So the tariff is given is rupees 100 per kVA plus 6 pesas per kilowatt hour. Find the annual saving in cost if the synchronous motor operates at 0.8 power factor leading instead of 0.8 power factor lagging okay find the savings if the synchronous motor operates at 0 0.8 0 0.8 power factor leading instead of 0 0.8 power factor lagging 93 percent efficiency 93% efficiency 93% efficiency this sort of an example I have in the next video also for you guys 
but uh, let's say we do it over here also so i will just do one part of it at one power factor right and at the other power factor then you will take it as a homework and you will see if you have any uh, um, loss or any uh, saving and you will let me know in the comment section about that right mm. so let's get going so what is the case over here part number a i would just give it when it is operating at what when when it is operating at point eight power factor lagging when point eight power factor lagging fine yes so you need to have the tariff is on the basis of kvs and i told you the kvs s total would be the p total squared plus q total squared under the root find it out can you not find it out you can now metric horsepower to kilowatts so metric horsepower let me write it with a different color so metric horsepower one metric horsepower is what 0 0.735 kilowatts 0 0.735 kilowatts 0 0.735 kilowatts now you can do the conversions by yourself you can do the conversions by yourself so what do you have is you will convert this also you will convert this also so convert please this is first of all the output of course how so for the synchronous motor let's say number one let's say number one so converting this 100 metric horsepower to what to kilowatts or i will just write the power input directly so what do you have is you would just do it by uh, 100 uh, multiplied with what you will have a hundred multiplied with 0 0.735 this would give you the output that is you have converted these horsepowers to kilowatts and then i divide it by the efficiency which is 0 0.93 so this will give me the input power let me take this call again please so i'm sorry for the disturbance so have a look what does this come out to be this is 79 kilowatts this is 79 kilowatts similarly you do it for this for the in for the i will just put it this way this were this was let's say one for synchronous motor two for the induction motor so 200 multiplied by 0 0.735 this would convert it to kilowatts the output and then divide it by the efficiency 0 0.82 this would give me the input to the uh, to the motor right efficiency is the output by input right uh, yes so what do you have from here what do you have from here is 179.4 179.4 and, and these are kilowatts again and uh, and the third one is a lightning load so p3 is just a simple lightning load is what is 30 kilowatts now p total would be p1 plus p2 plus p3 of course so so what do you have is that p total you would put it p1 plus p2 plus p3 so add these three what does this come out to be uh, total active power 288.4 kilowatts 288.4 kilowatts fine yes so you've got your p total so put it over here 288.4 squared plus now you need your q total so for q you need to have what the relation between q and p so relation between q and p is this tangent of phi and phi you can find it from angle so q1 for the synchronous uh, for the synchronous motor would be 79 times the tangent of what angle cos inverse of 0 0.8 0 0.8 so this comes out to be what 79 tangent cos inverse of 0 0.8 is uh, 59 59.25 and have a look over here this is given that this is operating at a lagging power factor in this case this is operating in the lagging power factor this is given in the question synchronous motor over here fine yes similarly q2 q2 would be what q2 
so that would be p2 which is for the synchron for the induction motor 179.4 multiplied by the tangent of what angle cos inverse of the power factor angle which is 0 0.707 and this comes out to be what 179.4 179.4 kvars and these are again lagging wars yes yes lightning load lagging kvr is zero q3 is zero because this is at a unity power factor this is a simple lightning load so the q total would come out to be q1 plus q2 plus a Q3 so these are the total wars and these are the total lagging wars so you add them up directly add them up directly this comes out to be 238.65 238.65 kvars and these are all inductive wars or lagging wars so put it over here 238.65 squared under the root what does the total kva comes out to be what S total S total is 374.4 374.4 kvs now the annual kva charges annual kva charges you also need to have the the what the energy units consumed you also have to have the energy units consumed So have a look first of all the KVA charges or the fixed part KVA charges or I will name as the fixed cost or the fixed part would be what that is rupees where is the tariff 100 per KVA so multiply 100 with the total KVAs that is 374.4 so this comes out to be how much 37440 of course 37440 rupees now the the energy charges or uh, the energy charges or which are the variable cost that is the energy cost multiplied by the so for that you need the energy units so e is equal to load factor multiply maximum demand multiply time load factor is not given take the connected load the total pt so the total pt is what 288.4 288.4 and we are going for annual calculation so multiply it with the hours in the year are 8760 so the energy units are 2526384 Two five two six three eight four. These are the kilowatt hours they have consumed annually. So the variable cost would be on the basis of this two five two six three eight four multiplied by the cost is six pesos. So multiplied with zero point zero six would give you the rupees charges for energy units based one five one five eight three one five one five eight three rupees so this implies what that my cost of electricity over here would be what cost of electricity for that problem would be kva charges plus this which means the annual bill annual bill would be three seven double four zero plus one five one five eight three so this comes out to be one eight nine 189023 189023 rupees so this is for the first case now for the second case what do you have is uh, for the second case do you want to take it as a homework or should i do it so for the second case the synchronous motor would operate at 0.8 power factor leading now if this operates at power factor leading so the total power would of course remain the same but then what would change is this the q a t and the sign would change of course p total would remain the same p total would remain the same q total now would be different that is what that was for the synchronous motor is case number two right a uh, case number one so have a look this one with this one would now come with a negative sign so negative 59.25 you would have a negative 59.25 with this you would have a minus 59.25 why because these would now be leading wars for case number two and then you have a plus this one 
plus 179.4 so what do you have is the net lagging kvrs would be 110 110.15 so these are the net kvrs these are positive so which means these are lagging still the overall is lagging so now the the s total would change p total is the same is this one 288.4 squared plus the q total has changed 120.15 squared under the root and this comes out to be how much 312.4 312.4 kvas now the kva charges are what kva charges they are 312.4 multiply 100 so this would be rupees 31240 31240 rupees right yes similarly the energy charges would remain the same why because the energy units are the same so this is 151583 151583 so which means that the total cost is what add these two up please as these two up 182823 182 823 right so this is the cost of electricity too when the motor operates at point eight power factor leading this one is for lagging so have a look if let's say this is one let's say two so you have what you go for one minus two so if this gives you a positive result which means you have got your saving and the amount is that amount is saved if 1 minus 2 gives you a negative result, you have got the amount lost and that is the amount lost or saved. Is that fine? It is. So, I believe this was just simpler examples, very simpler examples. The main idea is clear. What you have to do is from the power triangle. Everything is from the power triangle. You, you have to find Q, P and S and that is it i finished this video over here i have one remaining example i'll do it in the next video and then we'll see whatever the next topic may be till then take care of yourselves everyone around you goodbye